I worked here for one year when I was between my freshman and sophomore year at college, pinning insects in the department then of entomology. So that's how I first came to the American Museum of Natural History. I was paid 50 cents an hour. <laughs> While I was at the University of Kansas, I was working with a former staff member here who was a bee specialist. As my advisor, he said I could work on bees or beetles, whatever I wanted to, but I thought I'd learn more from him by working on bees. Bees, of course, are extremely important to mankind. They pollinate so many different terrestrial plants that without bees, uh, we would not have the ecosystems the terrestrial ecosystems that we now have. Every time one finds a nest and can uh, uh, find new information by looking into the nest, recovering the immature stages that people don't usually look at, uh, this is always a, a pleasurable experience. This is basically what I do for a living. I had taught at uh, Ohio State University before I came to this institution. And I thought one advantage of working in a major museum is you didn't have to meet classes uh, all the time that you could take off and when the bees were flying in uh, in the Atacama Desert, why you go to the Atacama Desert. When they're flying in the Namib Desert, you go over to Africa to the Namib Desert. And in between, you can go to the Southwestern Research Station, which is the research station that we sponsor here. A lot of my research has been done at the Southwestern Research Station in Arizona. I can remember one time thinking that I have been working on parasitic bees and solitary bees over a very long period of time. And I really should get to know something about social bees and the social bee that occurs out in Arizona is a nice, large bumblebee. And we, we stumbled across a, a, a nest uh, of this bee, and I thought, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this nest apart and see if I understand the structure of the nest. Female bees sting, so that, that's the one you always have to watch out for. And I thought, well, the best thing to do is just to deplete the nest of the, all the females that are inside, and this would be fine. I always put the net over my head when I go after a specimen. If there are a lot of specimens in there, I can see which ones I want to retain, which ones I want to release alive. I put the net over my head, and I had not counted on the fact that with the social bee, they communicate and there's a pheromone that's given off by these bees. One nailed me right between the eye. It was a very painful sting. And I threw down my net, and the other one started to chase me around the desert. That wasn't embarrassing. What was embarrassing is I had a female student and my, uh, my sons there, and they were all laughing their heads off. And I, <laughs> I would hate to have a job where my only concern was uh, bringing home a paycheck. This is one where I'm basically being paid to do my hobby, and I think that's a, that's a wonderful experience.